Hi there, this is Paddy, and the date today is August the 5th. Thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. Our readings for today will come from Ezra chapter 1, because we finished 2 Chronicles yesterday. I actually didn't know that until this morning. 2 Chronicles, by the way, is the last book in the Hebrew Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, called the Tanakh. We have the same books, just in a different order. Uh, so Ezra chapter 1. We'll also read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2, and Proverbs chapter 20. And although we've finished the book of Psalms in our daily Bible readings, today I encourage you to read Psalm chapter 27, verses 7 to 14. I'll be reading from the BSB, the Berean Standard Bible. Now let's ask God for his blessing. Lord God, please bless this reading of your word, your holy word, to me and to those who are following along. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before we start Ezra, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent of the intelligent, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, consider the time of your calling. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast in his presence. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Chapter 2 When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Now let's go to Ezra, beginning this book today, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, heads up, there are a few names in uh, the second chapter that we will read, and I'm not good at pronouncing them, so you're going to have to bear with me. Anyway, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 says... In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord stirred the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to send a proclamation throughout his kingdom and to put in it, uh, put it in writing as follows. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, who has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, has appointed me to build a house for him at Jerusalem and Judah. Whoever among you belongs to his people, may his God be with him, and may he go to Jerusalem and Judah and build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let every survivor, wherever he lives, be assisted by the men of that region with silver, gold, goods and livestock, along with a free will offering for the house of God in Jerusalem. So the family heads of Judah and Benjamin, along with the priests and Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, prepared to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And all their neighbors supported them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with valuables in addition to all their free will offerings. King Cyrus also brought out the articles belonging to the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the temple of his gods. 
Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought out by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. This was the inventory. 30 gold dishes, 1,000 silver dishes, 29 silver utensils, 30 gold bowls, 410 matching silver bowls, and 1,000 other articles. In all, there were 5,400 gold and silver articles. Sheshbazar brought all these along with the exiles, uh, sorry, all these along when the exiles went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. And chapter 2 starts by saying, Now there are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles, carried away to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar its king. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town, accompanied by Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Seriah, Reliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispah, Bigvi, Rehum, and Barna. This is the count of the men of Israel. The descendants of Parosh, 2172. The descendants of Shephatiah, 372. The descendants of Ara, 775. The descendants of Pehath Moab through the line of Jeshua and Joab, 2,812. The descendants of Elam, 1,254. The descendants of Zatu, 945. The descendants of Zarkai, 760. The descendants of Bani, 642. The descendants of Bebai, 623. The descendants of Azgad, 1,222. The descendants of Adonikam, 666. The descendants of Bigvai, 2056. The de descendants of Adin, 454. The descendants of Atur through Hezekiah, 98. The descendants of Bezai, 323. The descendants of Jorah, 112. The descendants of Hashum, 223. The descendants of Gibar, 95. The men of Bethlehem, 123. The men of Netophar, 56. The men of Anathoth, 128. The descendants of Asmaveth, 42. The men of Kiriath Jerim, Chephira, and Beeroth, 743. The men of Ramah and Giba, 621. The men of Mishmash, 122. The men of Bethel and I, 223. The descendants of Nebo, 52. The descendants of Magbish, 156. The descendants of the other Elam, 1,254. The descendants of Harim, 320. The men of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 725. The men of Jericho, 345. And the descendants of Sina, 3,630. The priests. The descendants of Jediah, through the house of Jeshua, 973. The descendants of Emer, Amir, 1,052. The descendants of Pashur, 1,247. And the descendants of Harim, 1,017. The Levites. The descendants of Jeshua and Kadmiel, through the line of Hodaviah, 74. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, 128. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, the descendants of Atur, the descendants of Talmon, the descendants of Akub, the descendants of Hatita, and the descendants of Shobai, 139 in all. The temple servants, the descendants of Ziha, the descendants of Hashba, the descendants of Tabalth, the descendants of Kiros, the descendants of Siaha, the descendants of Padon, the descendants of Lebanah, the descendants of Hagabah, the descendants of Akub, the descendants of Hagub, the descendants of Shalmai, the descendants of Hanan, the descendants of Gedal, the descendants of Gaha, the descendants of Rehaya, the descendants of Rezin, the descendants of Nakoda, the descendants of Gazam, the descendants of Uzzah, the descendants of Pasia, the descendants of Besai, the descendants of Asna, the descendants of Meunim, the descendants of Nefushim, the descendants of Fakbuk, the descendants of Hakufa, the descendants of Hahu, the descendants the descendants of Basluth, the descendants of Mehida, the descendants of Hasha, the descendants of Barkos, the descendants of Sisera, the descendants of Tima, the descendants of Nezia, and the descendants of Hatifa. The descendants of the servants of Solomon. The descendants of Sotai, the descendants of Sophereth, the descendants of Peruda, the descendants of Jala, and the descendants of Darkon, the descendants of Gidel, the descendants of Shephatia, the descendants of Hatil, the descendants of Pochereth, Azibaim, and the descendants of Ami. 
The temple servants and descendants of the servants of Solomon numbered 392 in all. The following came up from Tel Melah, Tel Hashar, Cherub, Adan and Emir, but could not prove that their families were descendants from Israel. The descendants of Teliah, the descendants of Tobiah and the descendants of Nekoda, 652 in all. And from among the priests, the descendants of Habiah, the descendants of Hakoz, and the descendants of Barzillai, who had married a daughter of Barzillai the Gileadite and was called by their name. These men searched for their family records, but they could not find them and so were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor ordered them not to eat the most holy things until there was a priest to consult the Urim and Thummim. The whole assembly numbered 42,360, in addition to their 7,337 men servants and maid servants, as well as their 200 male and female singers, they had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 6, donkeys. When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings to rebuild the house of God on its original site. According to their ability, they gave to the treasury for this work. 61,000 derricks of gold, 5,000 miners of gold, and 100 priestly garments. So the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants, along with some of the people, settled in their own towns, and the rest of the Israelites settled in their towns. All right, that wasn't the easiest passage to read. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. Much easier to read, and these are wise sayings, so listen carefully. Proverbs 20, verses 22 and 23. Do not say, I will avenge this evil. Wait on the Lord, and he will save you. Unequal weights are detestable to the Lord, and dishonest scales are no good. And with that being read, we finish today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow, August the 6th, as we continue in the 8th month of our one-year Bible reading plan. Have a great day or a peaceful night's sleep, depending on when you're listening to this. Tune in tomorrow, and as we close, we pray. Pray with me. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.